1999, I was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Um, I spent my birthday in hospital that year when I was 20 years old. And um, I'll skip further ahead now. And uh, I'll go to 2007 uh, when my daughter was born. Mm. And uh, that was stressful. And I had a full-time job. Uh, I was working in a call center. And, um, and yeah, and uh, so I was working full time, had a child keeping us up awake at night. So mm -hmm. lack of sleep didn't help, but thankfully I, the medicine was working. And then after about a year, uh, I didn't know this, but my medicine had been recalled. Mm. And I was still thinking it was working and I was still using it, but uh, my functioning was decreasing a little bit. Mm. Uh, and then with lack of sleep from my daughter and taking care of her at the house. And we like, this was my first mortgage. Uh, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. I was just going to say, <laughs> that's a lot of stuff that starts to pile up. And then you don't know at the time either that, the medication, which had been one of the things that helped to keep you stable those years, wasn't even working. Yeah. So you and were really so, coasting without realizing it. And then all the pressures built up. Yeah. And then not only that, I didn't have a psychiatrist helping me at the time. Hmm. And he thought I was doing so well that he just kind of let me go. Okay. And so then I had to find a new psychiatrist. And I'm still with this psychiatrist now thank goodness mm -hmm. and uh, anyways so during the year of 2007 to 2008 uh, my functioning was getting lower uh, and then I had to find a new doctor so when you say and your functioning was getting lower like uh, maybe tell us a little bit what, what does that mean well um I was getting anxious. I was uh, feeling a lot of chest pain. Um, during that time, I think I had, um, well, I had to leave my uh, call center job. And thankfully, I had worked there for two years, you know. Mm -hmm. And so 2006 to 2008, and I mm -hmm. left. And I went on... Uh, Great West Life benefits, mm. like long-term disability after that. And mm. they helped me look for a job. And um, so all this was going on. My functioning was going down. And the reason I say that is because my anxiety was going up. Oh, okay. My chest pain was going up. Mm -hmm. uh, so the medicine was sort of working, but it wasn't working properly. Okay. So your anxiety and, and some of those kinds of and, reactions and, were, were picking up. Yeah. And my paranoia was kicking in and uh, I was, it was like I was being scared for my life again. Okay. And you'd experienced that before you said yeah. when you were 20, was that some of the stuff that, that happened to you back then? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And except it was different then, like the mm -hmm. first episode, because it was more in my head mm -hmm. than physical pain. Oh, okay. Yeah. With the thoughts in my head. Mm -hmm. So, so the medicine was working partially, but it wasn't working at full capacity. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I suffered from that, mm -hmm. you know, well, from the illness because the right. medicine wasn't working properly. Mm -hmm. So anyways, um, 2008, I left my job at the call center. And, um, and then I, in 2009, I started looking even harder for a job. And I, I worked at a few places. I worked for Manitoba Justice. Can I take you oh. back just a little bit, Eric? I just want to come back to a couple of things because it sounds like there was a lot of stuff that happened uh, before you turned 20. And then it sounds like this 2007, 2008 was a bit of a relapse. 
uh, yeah. coming back because you'd done so well over so many uh, years. Mm -hmm. And now with the pressures and being a new dad and employment, mm -hmm. it seems like that triggered triggered a relapse, plus sometimes medication's not working. Yeah. Uh, but if you could tell me a little bit about what was that like? Um, I'm sure there was a lot of fearfulness around having a relapse like that. What was mm -hmm. it like prior to that? What was it like coming to terms with the diagnosis that you received back in the day when you were young, you were, you were 20, you were, you were just starting out? Uh, what kind of impact did that have on you at that time? Like, could you repeat the question? What kind of impact did having a diagnosis of, uh, I don't know if you had an original diagnosis of schizophrenia or, or first episode psychosis, how did, how, did that, how did that impact on you? What was your reaction to that? You were young, you were um, 20, a young, with your whole life ahead of you. What did that? I, I think part of me was in denial at first for mm -hmm. a little bit. Okay, was it a bit of a shock but, as well? I don't... Um, it, I sort of, I was a little bit sad, uh, mm -hmm. kind of in denial. Um, yeah. And I, I even almost threw out my prescription in the garbage, like mm -hmm. the, the written prescription, because mm -hmm. I thought I didn't have it. Okay. But, but, uh, I think I've lost you there, Eric. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Sorry about that. That okay. was work. <laughs> Um, so anyways, um, what but part of me, part of me knew I was, you know, still me, part of me knew something was wrong. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I thought something was wrong was because my uncle had it, oh, okay. but I didn't know what he experienced until... I sort of went through what he went through. Okay, so you had an uncle that had at some point been diagnosed with schizophrenia. So mm -hmm. you had some familiarity uh, in yeah. the family, but you didn't really know what it went on for him. You didn't know what it felt like and what the experience no. was like. Did you have any preconceptions about what it meant to be a person living with schizophrenia? Did you have any... Um, thoughts about it, uh, what it's like out there in the world uh, for somebody who is living with, uh, with a mental illness like that? Um, like, are you, like, you, what do you did mean? You, did you have any thoughts about it? Was there any preconceived ideas out there about people with schizophrenia? Did you struggle with any oh, of that? Uh, with the way um, people think about people with schizophrenia? Well, because my uncle, he, he looked like a person, you know, and he, he was very intelligent. Mm -hmm. um, like I said before, he had the opportunity to go to Oxford University in England when he was younger. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't go because either uh, his illness or his life situation with the family. Mm. And uh, yeah. So do you but, think that his but, illness, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. But um, I, other than him, I had no other experience with anyone else with uh, diagnosed with schizophrenia. Okay. So when, yeah. when you first went to hospital and you were, I don't know if you were given this as a diagnosis at that time, your reaction was? You said, My well, because my affect was flat, like almost non-existent, mm. um, I, I kind of just thought later on when I was diagnosed that I just, I just thought, well, it kind of helped. Mm -hmm. Well, it helped me because okay. then I, I could understand what I'm going through. Okay, so it gave you something to understand, something to yeah. with. It explained yeah. some things for you. Yes, and so then I could, then I could sort of maneuver through what I was experiencing okay. by knowing what was going on in my head. Yeah. Okay. But they don't. But they don't explain 
like the details of the symptoms to you. They just explain the symptoms and then you have to figure out what thoughts are the illness and what thoughts are your own thoughts. Mm -hmm. Right. So given that you said you were at first in kind of a state of denial and understandably, you know, that would be, Mm -hmm. you know, a pretty heavy thing. The mm-hmm. other thing you said, it was almost a relief, though, because at least then you had something that could explain, you know, some of what you were going through. Um, how did you see your future at that point when you first heard this? How did you think things, did you, have, did you think about how things might unfold? Uh, were you a bit fearful about how things might go in, for you? I was wondering if I even had a future, actually. Hmm. And, uh, and I, I couldn't foresee a future for me. Okay. So what, what stood in the way then? What was it that would say, okay, I don't even know if I have a future here. Um, what stood in the way? Yeah, um, what, what, what made you think that? What made you think that? Oh, wow. I think, yeah. I think because I had trouble with certain problem solving skills and I was on a high dose of medicine. Mm. thankfully when I asked after I was my mind was healing with the medicine that uh, eventually I said I couldn't think to the doctor on this high dose of medicine Mm. so once he said well let's lower it together Mm -hmm. then I realized like that empowered me to say you know you have control over your life oh okay so that was a bit of a turning point for you, just being able to mm-hmm. say to your doctor, this isn't working for me. Mm-hmm. And to, to say, no, I, I, I need less. I need actually yeah. less medication because I want to be able to think clearly. Yeah. So, and you said that empowered you. So mm-hmm. when that happened, did that change things for you at all? Did, did yes. you start to change things? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I because so. then I was, I, I started getting emotion back because the medicine was lowered, but to a therapeutic dose. Okay. And so I was able to function better, have my feelings back. I felt happier. I felt more motivated. I felt excited. Hmm. I felt, I felt like I, I could start a future now. Okay. So that made a huge difference. Yeah, it did. Yeah. What other things, was there a turning point for you? Um, that that helped you get back on your feet in addition to that in addition to realizing okay i think i'm a bit over medicated but was there another turning point in terms of people or places that helped you along uh yes my family and they would say if i like they wouldn't know this but sometimes i would skip a dose of medicine on a day Uh, yeah and then they'd say you had a bad day and then i realized I didn't have my medicine that day either. <laughs> <laughs> so they're kind of reflecting that back to you. They can yes. see, you know. So, yes. so just a question around what other what things other than medicine were things that really got you sort of moving moving ahead. Were there other other things in your life that you found? Uh, I think uh, friends and family that were supportive in a good way. Okay. Um, indicating, you know, when I was having a good day or you know or if something didn't make sense to them but made sense to me and then Mm -hmm. they explained to me how it didn't make sense okay whatever they were were real with you they were honest yes yeah Yeah. exactly yeah so that is something that is good support um Mm -hmm. would that be anybody could do that or people only certain people um, um, well, there's a right way of doing it and a wrong way of doing it. Okay. So what's the and right way of doing it? Being assertive and, you know, explaining in a way that's, you know, if it's something that needs to be in private, talk to them in private. Oh, if okay. it needs to be out in the open and it's okay, then, you know, mm-hmm. say that. Okay. So respecting your need for privacy and dignity you know, yeah, yeah. essential. Um, yes. So what about, so, so this was back in your early twenties uh, mm-hmm. and you're getting, you're getting back on your feet. You're sort of coming around. 
what were other things that that you found uh helped you uh because now you know you're you're living this very um thriving you know kind of life <laughs> you know given yeah. at one time you didn't think you saw a future and now you look at where you are now what other steps did you take that helped you to get where you are well i uh i went back to red river college when i was younger and thankfully they kept my credits from when i left the first time okay because you were in college when mm -hmm. when the symptoms overtook you at that time right? yeah and they got yes. strong yeah and yes so you had to leave uh red river mm -hmm. at that time okay yes. so now you're saying you went back mm -hmm. and i finished my business administration diploma with a major in marketing wow excellent mm -hmm. so now you've got your got some good stability you've got your mm -hmm. marketing degree mm -hmm. Where did that take you uh, for the <laughs> next little while? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, when I had the job at the call center, that helped a lot because it was full time. And uh, I learned customer service skills, mm. which was great. Yeah. And uh, But then, like I said, we bought a house in 2006. My daughter was born in 2007. So somewhere yeah. along the line, you met your wife, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> can't forget that. <laughs> was that yes. something when you were in the depths of despair? Did you think that's not going to happen for me? Oh, uh, no. Uh, how I met my wife was when I was working for the Manitoba Finance Department while um, finishing my business administration diploma with okay. major marketing. Yeah. I sort I sort of missed that part for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you ended up married and with a child in the house, but I hadn't heard anything about the wife. <laughs> yeah. Well, How we've is, been the, we've yeah, been together ahead. since two thousand and three. Okay, so she's been along the this this the second this recovery. Round you had the you had a bit of that relapse. She mm -hmm. was there with you through that. Yes. Yeah. So I'm guessing she's been a pretty big supporter. Um, as yes. Well. Yeah. Yes. She's a mental health uh, advocate mm -hmm. uh, for me and my daughter, I guess. <laughs> so she got on on the job experience, real yeah. life. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so how does that? So, so going back again, you know, you had this relapse. You had to get back on your feet again. Is there anything that, when you reflect on? when you reflected back was there anything that you thought oh, okay maybe this like could have done differently or i should have been doing this or this really helped did it help you to get some insight into what you need to do uh to stay on your path so Sometimes, oh go ahead sorry um yeah um i think i learned the insight from having an open conversation about the illness and knowing that my uncle had it, I think helped because okay. I, I was either going to use my medicine and get better or I'd be on the street. Like, well, my uncle wasn't on the street. He had an apartment, but he would wander the streets a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so what he was doing, I don't know, but, uh, that's, that's what he did. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I didn't want to go that route. Okay. And I just, I thought if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go the opposite way of what he did. Okay. And so I, I was determined to do that. Okay. So there's that, that strength and that determination. Uh, mm -hmm. that you want, you, you didn't, you know, that his situation was not the best that you wanted for yourself and that you were going to need to do some things to make sure mm -hmm. that you could move ahead. Did, yeah. you re did you reach out to any place or any people at that point? At any point um, my parents reached out to Manitoba Schizophrenia Society in 2000 okay. uh, to 2002. Okay, so pretty early on there. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. they know Karen and they know uh, oh, okay. Chris. So they know some of the people that you've been yeah. involved with now for years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so were they able to bring that to you? They they got there mm -hmm. first. 
Mm -hmm. And then they brought you in somehow. Did they introduce you to the Manitoba Schizophrenia Society? Uh, yes, they did a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but then let's uh, fast forward a bit. Okay. And uh, go back to 2009. Okay. And that's when I was still looking for a job mm -hmm. after my second episode. And the medicine had been recalled, and I didn't know. Oh, okay. Anyways, so when I, in 2008 and nine, I thankfully, I found a psychiatrist, which is the one I'm with now. Okay. And, um, oh, yeah. And so, um someone that was doing peer support at MSS helped me go step by step to talking to student nurses hmm. at SMHC. Okay. And so from 2008 to, to now, I still talk to student nurses. And so um, let me back up to 2000 and nine <laughs> 2009 mm -hmm. to 2010 when i was talking to the student nurses with the peer support worker that helped me gradually you know get my feet wet mm -hmm. um then uh she she had left and i found a full-time job in 2010 at walmart in the spring of 2010 and so then I thought, well, I haven't heard from her. So I called her in June of 2010. And I said, where are you? She said, oh, I quit. I said, well, who's got your position at MSS uh, going to the hospitals? And she said, well, no one. Mm -hmm. So she said, do you want me to put in a good word for you? Oh. I said, yes, please. Mm -hmm. And so she talked to the former CEO, uh, Chris. Oh, at, at yes, at MSS, of course. At, at MSS, yeah. yeah. And he, he said, give me a, or she called me back and she said, do you want both jobs? I said, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. I'll take a couple of those. <laughs> yeah. So, so it was uh, HSC and the other hospitals and SMHC. SMHC and is? Selkirk Mental Health Center. Oh, okay. So Health Sciences Center, Selkirk Mental Health Hospital. And you were going in and now providing peer support to people who were struggling like you were at one time. Yes. And I'm yeah. guessing being able to share some hope and, 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 and help in a lot of ways mm -hmm. to those people. You know, if you go back, you know, if you have that memory, and I don't know if you carry that memory with you, what it was like for you and maybe how hopeless you felt early on. And now you go in there and here you've really, uh, you're on your feet, you're living a good life, but you still have that memory and you can share that hope with, with people is what mm -hmm. I am imagining is what you do. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So getting this job was a little bit of luck, but not so much because you'd already done a lot of work. Yeah. And actually, um, when I uh, got this job, I was, uh, I think, uh, 29 or 30. Okay. Yeah. And you've been there how long? I'm not trying to guess your age. <laughs> <laughs> 10 years. Okay. Ten so years you've been there July. 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's a lot to say, you know, just all of the different, you've tried out lots of different things. You took mm -hmm. jobs that gave you confidence along the way. And I'm mm -hmm. guessing that all of those things, translated into having some confidence in the work that you're doing and mm -hmm. you're doing really meaningful work that's close to your heart. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Which, that's important to you. Yes, very yeah. much so. I've yeah. learned a lot. 
Mm -hmm. uh, even in the last five years, I've learned even more than anyone can imagine. Now, not to put you on the spot, but what is one of the main things that you've learned, you know, in, in doing this work? I learned that I know, I know a few people would agree with me on this, is that uh, the voices, even though they're negative, I believe those are spiritual mm. and you can yeah. still function with them. Okay. The psychosis can be brought on by the voices because it's stressful mm. and maybe other factors, environmental okay. factors, maybe genetics. I don't know. Um, something wrong with your stomach or who knows. Mm. Um, so with those but, voice, oh, I'm sorry, you go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. But, but, but uh, the good news is, is that you can respect those voices by acknowledging them and you can talk to them well in your head of course right. <laughs> or pretend like you're on the phone with your cell phone and tell them <laughs> tell them tell them what to do okay so you are the one in control yes it doesn't yes. mean they're not there but you're the one that has and, the control over the situation and and you have to be assertive with them too right Okay. And polite and respectful. What we found is, is that when you're negative towards them, it only increases the negativity back from the voices and it okay. um, is not good. Okay. Like it, it just, it compounds the, the, um, the problem. So sometimes in, in some cases, if you try to get rid of something, sometimes it actually makes it worse. If you try, like, for instance, if you're mm -hmm. having a thought and you tell yourself, I'm not going to think about it, and you mm -hmm. resist and you resist and you resist, but then the thought becomes huge. Is that exactly kind of yes. what that's like? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I think a the lot of people could relate to that. The only difference is you've got a voice saying, you know, you're not good. Right. You're uh, you're a piece of crap. Like it's like a bully inside your head. Yeah. And you just have to stand your ground and be assertive mm -hmm. with it. Okay. And, and in a respectful way, because mm -hmm. otherwise, if you're not, it's not, it's not going to make it better. So then, learning some assertiveness skills to use for yourself. Now that's going to pay mm -hmm. off too, because you're going to be able mm -hmm. to use those in your life in general, anyway. Yes. Uh, so those are really good skills. What mm -hmm. about self care? What would you suggest to somebody who's struggling or living with um, voices or something like that? What would you recommend in terms of um, self care? Maybe what's worked for you? Self care. That entails self-compassion as well. Mm, okay. um, loving yourself, knowing yourself, being aware of yourself, knowing your pitfalls or your weaknesses okay. and your strengths. Yeah. Uh, work on your strengths and fix your weaknesses as you go along working on your strengths. Okay. So um, when you work on your strengths, you're expanding your strength basically you're expanding mm -hmm. strength and confidence and then that mm -hmm. in turn helps you with some of the more difficult vulnerable aspects right within your and, and and as you keep learning and wanting to learn um you'll get better at other things like your weaknesses will not go away but maybe you'll just be better at your weaknesses than you were before right right so I want to come back to something that you'd mentioned to me before, but I want you to talk a little bit about this. You wrote a book back yes. in 2009, was it, or 2010 or later? 12. 2012. 12. Okay. So yeah. tell, tell me a little bit about that. What's it called? Living with Shadows. Okay. And uh, basically it's, it's like a little memoir uh, about my life with, schizophrenia and a bit about my daughter and a few other things it's so not what, too long what motivated uh, you to do that um i did it for my family and so i think i made them proud mm -hmm. and uh yeah that oh, yeah. and 
you know, it, it's out there. Like at least people are reading it and actually mm-hmm. it saved a person's life. Wow. Um, one of their family members read it and they came to me and I signed the book and wow. uh, it, they realized it wasn't just spiritual, but it was mm-hmm. an actual real illness itself too. Mm. So the power of sharing with others and the power of sharing our experience uh, mm-hmm. is really something when you can give somebody that lifeline without even yeah. realizing that you're doing that. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. that's something to be that's something to be proud of. That's something to to hold close to your heart for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter hasn't read it yet, but oh, okay. she will one day. One day, yeah. One day. <laughs> she saw it once, but uh, I'll get her to read it. <laughs> so tell me something about what do you do for fun? Just give me a clue. Life isn't all about uh, <laughs> helping others and, and whatnot. What, what do you find that you enjoy that lifts you up? Uh, going on vacation. Okay. What <laughs> kind of vacation? Everybody likes a break, but what kind of vacation? Yeah. Uh, well, I've been to Mexico a few times. Yeah. Been, okay. to, been to Cuba, mm-hmm. Universal Studios. Yeah. Disney World. Hmm. We had an awesome time in Disney World in 2013. Yeah. And hmm. uh, went on some of the rides and uh, did, oh, went to BC a few times. Mm-hmm. Uh, BC, I actually zip lined last summer. And that's what I let your little cat out of the bag there at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> As you told me last time that you were zip lining. Yeah. Could you imagine of doing having done that a few years back when you were kind of uh, not as as uh, strong, feeling as strong and confident? No, I, I don't think I could have. Yeah. <laughs> but but last year when I did it in the summer, um, it was lots of fun. I I went over the harbor actually where there's yeah. water. Wow. It was amazing. Yeah. So yeah. exhilarating, maybe? Yeah, exhilarating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> now, the last time I talked to you, you mentioned that one of your favorite films was Beautiful Mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm just wondering yes. if you can just tell me what you found inspiring, just in a couple of, couple of sentences. What was it about that movie that you found, or that character, uh, that person that it was about? I think how he learned insight. That was John Nash. John Nash, yeah. Yeah. How he learned insight from the hallucinations. They never grew old, Mm -hmm. but he did. And then he realized they weren't really there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he went through a lot. He went through a lot of stigma back then. Mm -hmm. And considering he was a scientist, that was amazing. Mm-hmm. and uh that that was just incredible like people have no idea how tough psychosis is or yeah. ongoing schizo- ongoing psychosis which is called schizophrenia right and um it, it's not an easy battle because it's it's a constant battle in your head mm-hmm. that you have to you know have thoughts that are your own but in some ways, it's kind of a gift in the sense that you get new ideas from out of nowhere mm-hmm. and you have no idea. And it's like, dang, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> that's the beautiful mind part of it, you know? Yeah. And I think it turns that kind of that stigma on its head, too. It's like, no, there's mm-hmm. some incredible minds. And, and mm-hmm. uh, that the difficulty is, is the negative stuff that one ends up mm. doing to themselves because of it right uh, because of the, the the negative voices and the difficult voices uh but besides that there's some beauty in it too yeah there is yeah. there is yeah yeah we just have to sort of uh that's another thing like i've accepted that i've had i have this but it takes time it takes time for each and every person to come to terms with it and you can't force it right and i just want to come back to that idea of acceptance you know some people describe a mental health recovery as a as a journey 
and mm -hmm. a place where maybe eventually we come to acceptance, but there may be a lot of other steps along the way. So some of it might be the shock and the denial, and there's a grief process mm -hmm. that sometimes yes. happens. And it sounds like your story shows a lot of those steps, you know, grieving and thinking, well, you know, maybe I, I don't have a future, but then being able to, to, to come to acceptance and awareness mm -hmm. and then to, to strengthen yourself and stay on that recovery path, even if you have a bit of a setback, you know, right. that you came back and that you're back on it and you continue to grow, uh, mm -hmm. which says a lot about a really strong mind and a mm -hmm. strong determination, like you said, and some pretty significant resilience along the way. Thank you. So with that, I'm gonna thank you again, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> leaving you in this good position as we started out here. <laughs> I really want to thank you for coming on and being so honest and sharing uh, much of mm -hmm. your story. I'm going to re recommend to people, if you want to know a little bit more about Eric, uh, check out his uh, book. And also Eric works at Manitoba Schizophrenia Society. Check out Manitoba Schizophrenia Society online, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the Mental Health Education Resource Center. And uh, we look forward to our next episode of Rocking Your Recovery. But for now, thank you, Eric, and uh, you take care. Yes, you too, Tracy. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.